Alright, so welcome back to the channel guys. Welcome back to another video and today it is the first video in the new shop. I'm super excited to be working in today. Like I said, it's a new video. It's a new start. It's a new change for everything. So I'm starting off by doing things right and it is about time to address the suspension in the car. Right now we're going to be tackling the rear shocks. So right now I've got the car ready to go up in the air. There's about a couple things that we need to do to prepare for this. First thing what we're going to have to do is to remove all of the carpet liners from each side of the boot. So you've got the driver side, right hand drive driver side and the passenger side here. So these need to come out. They're held on by a couple of clips which you'll see somewhere all over here. If your car has these storage cargo locks, they're held on by T30s I think it was. So yeah, T30s to take these off and then you just remove them by taking off this little cover strip here. Don't mind the state of the boot. It's all still messed up all from the move and stuff. So yeah, it's about time to get the shocks ready and it's been bugging me for a while. If you'll be following this guide, I'll be leaving all the information down in the description down below. Let's get into this. Starting off by removing the storage tray, storage bin here. All you have to do is lift it up and slide it out. Now that we got that done, it's all a matter of the clips that's all around. I'm going to remove this plastic cover over here so we can get this out and the carpet should be able to come out freely after we remove all the clips which you guys see now. To get this plastic cover off all you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver. The flathead is to remove this cover pieces over here and the Phillips is to remove the screws that hold it into place and then you have these one, two, three, four clips that hold it into place and then it just picks up and slides off. So with your flathead screwdriver all you're going to do is you're going to take one end and you're gonna pick just enough just so you can loosen up and then you can use your tr interior trim tool if you have one otherwise if you don't link in the description just so that you can have enough leverage to open it up and now we have this little cover which comes off and now you have access to the top mount for the shock now to get this top mount off what you're going to need is a 16 millimeter spanner that has a ring you can use a ring a socket part here you can use that or you can use the open end side whichever you feel comfortable with it's better to use the rings for more leverage and then you're going to need a six millimeter uh, socket so to hold the counterpoint on the top here of the shock now i'm using my 3 8 set with a t-bar so i have most leverage i don't want to damage the ratchet so i'm going to put the, the ring in first and then i'm going to put the socket over and then you can crack it open if you have a ratcheting spanner it's all the better but i don't so we work with what we do And then once you have it loose enough, you can just undo it and remove it off. But now that we have the upper part taken care of, now it's time to go underneath the car and remove the shock off the actual body itself. Okay, now that we've got the car in the air, we've got the wheel removed, as you can see, the shock supposed to have been staying down but unfortunately these shocks are completely dead so the whole staying down part yeah that's not gonna work to remove the shocks now you can see in that point there it's a it's enough space for a 15 millimeter spanner and underneath you have a 17 millimeter nut which you're gonna use to lock the shock in so i'm gonna put you guys down and work from on top so you take the shock out from here you're gonna put your 15 spanner inside here and that'll act as your counter hold for the shock itself. And I'm gonna use the, the impact with the 17 socket underneath and loosen this entire thing out. Now once you have that removed, when you do it to mess up, remove the shock. And it's free. I don't have to do a demonstration of this, you can see it's already finished. <laughs> Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. So as you guys can see, this is the condition of the shock that came out of the car. And this is the one that we have to replace it with. Yeah, as you can see, they're identical. And this actually holds, unlike this. So for original shocks from 2006, 
I'm assuming the service due, and yeah, I time to replace it, obviously maintenance wise. There are things that we're gonna have to transfer, like this cover over here, this on top here. I don't think I'm gonna use these bounce tops because I put these on top just for the sake of it. And then obviously this dust cover as well. So yeah, we're gonna reuse these and transfer over. So that. Yeah, time to install it back into the car. Now to install it back into the car, as you can see, because I got the car in the air, it's not going to line up properly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the car down, let the axle sit onto the jack stand, which I have down there, and pick this wheel axle up. So then I, it, the shock will line up into place, and then it will be able to slot in properly. So let's do that now. Now that we got that somewhat in place, Time to line it up. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but we're going to push this section of the shock absorber down, and then you're going to let this gently glide back into place after you comp after you compress it com completely. You can let this slide all the way back into place. The reason why we did it this way is so that it lines up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tighten up at the bottom slowly, just so that it takes. You've got the original nut that's back over here, it takes the same thing and then we can do the same thing for up inside the boot and so that the shock is not going anywhere. Then once it's down, like, like this at right height, then we can tighten everything up. So while you have the car like this, just grab your bushing and just thread this in slightly. Like that and then you can tighten up once everything is ready. Okay, now that we've got the shocks in place, bearing in mind I'm doing both of these simultaneously, I'm gonna show you that one side. So now we've got the shock in place, time to tighten it up from underneath. You use your 15 spanner over here again to lock it into counter plate, and then tighten it up. And then done. Now in all, seriousness the shock part is done it's all a matter of closing up by putting up everything back in tightening everything up which you guys will see now so i'm going to close up everything for the rear end off camera put the wheels and everything back on and now you guys are seeing how easy it is to change the shocks in your car so i'm just going to close everything up and then we can wrap up for this video it's rather important that you note that the size of the counter lock for my new shocks in the instance it's a seven millimeter whereas the original shocks are six millimeters. So you just need to be aware of that for here so that you're not making the same mistake I did. Now we can go ahead and close up. Well, that's it for this video guys thank you so much for watching if you found this video informative please do give me a thumbs up it really helps me grow a lot on youtube if you have any questions please learn down in the comment section down below i'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions for ease of installation this was quite easy the only thing that took me a long time was actually putting those boot carpets back in place um especially around because of the cargo net uh, latches so yeah that was the irritating part about it but otherwise i'm super excited to have this done and i'm super excited to drive the car now and see what the difference is I'm not going to be doing the front shocks because the air suspension setup will be completed. 
and we will be getting underway with that. So it make no financial sense to have the fronts done and have it replaced with double bellow air springs uh, with new shocks and everything like that. Um, there is new suspension stuff coming in soon, so I'm not too sure about that, but stay tuned for that video. Um, like I did mention that the carrier bearing will be done, that's in the pipeline coming soon. That's supposed to be the next video after the last one, but things happened and this is what able to get done. So thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video. Leave your feedback down below and subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys again.